Hello, America. Anyone? Anyone? Anyone out there? This is Sean Bianca, GOP girl with Clean TV Live and True News for President Trump. And I made a comment last night and I got a lot of backlash for it on Facebook. Before I talk about that comment, first and foremost, I want everyone to know I am not jumping the Trump train. I am still a supporter of President Trump. I am still completely behind him. However, I am not going to sit by and not say something when I see something that concerns me. I made a comment last night. I said I didn't feel Jared Kushner should be in the White House and should be a chief advisor to the President of the United States. I watched a town meeting. I watched a woman in the military whose son is in the, rather her son is in the military. And she said that she found it hard to believe that there weren't 10, 20, 30 other people, generals, commanders, whatever, that knew more about foreign policy and affairs of state than Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner just went to Iraq recently. Let me read some of the comments, okay? A lot of you are on Facebook and you're not on Twitter. And I, I had to laugh. First of all, we have Jared Kushner in the middle of the desert in Iraq in a pair of khakis and a light blue shirt and a navy blazer. Who the heck needs a navy blazer in the middle of the desert? Oh, but wait, it gets better. He has his loafers. And then he has the bulletproof vest. Now, if a bomb goes off, a bulletproof vest isn't going to do much, but it gets better. Has his name on it. Kushner. Is that in case he gets lost in the desert? I don't know. But these are the comments. Hashtag Kushner at war on his Iraq visit. Pamela Moore, who has always been a staunch supporter of Trump, says, Sir, we don't have any polo ponies. Then we have another one, and uh, uh, Jared Kushner has, uh, I don't know who the heck is behind him, but he's dressed in the same <laughs> exact outfit. We're in the middle of Iraq. We have two frat-looking boys in their khakis and navy blazers and, and their bulletproof vests. While well, you've got men in the military that are wearing no bu bulletproof vests, looking at these guys like they're complete idiots. Anyway, uh, prep school bullies, hashtag uh, Kushner at war. Then we have another tweet where someone says Ray-Bans, check. Khaki Dockers, check. Rolex watch, check. Tom Ford bag, check. Gucci loafers, check. Best, 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 best friend from boarding school, chip, check. Then we have Ralph Lauren at war, saving private equity. I mean, come on. Jared Kushner in the middle of Iraq, what, what is he doing there? He knows nothing about war. You know what? I'm in contact with a guy who's actually a Kurdish fighter. He's 19 years old. That's a guy that knows something about war, okay? The men in our military know something about war. Jared Kushner has no business, in my opinion, and many, many other uh, people's opinions, of being a top advisor to the President of the United States. Jared Kushner, all of what, 35 years old, real estate investor, great. I think that's wonderful. However, he's known to be a globalist. He's also been accused of being a Democrat by Steve Bannon. Steve Bannon and Jared Kushner have been going head to head. Supposedly now they've made nice and they're getting along. But Steve Bannon is no longer on the, uh, listening to the security briefings. I have a problem with that. I'd rather have Steve Bannon listening to the security briefings than Jared Kushner. Jared Kushner is a registered Democrat. I didn't vote for Jared Kushner. I didn't vote for a president that was going to have globalists in the White House. And yet, today it was announced that we have the, a new, he's going to be the chairman of the Council of Economic Affairs, Kevin Hassett. Guess what? If he's approved, he's a globalist. He's pro-immigration. He's pro-outsourcing. He believes in growing the nation's 
economics by putting workers and consumers from outside. He, he believes in free trade. Out, he wants to outsource, despite Trump saying, buy American, hire American. So this is Kevin Hassett. Breibart News reported that today. Now, I have a problem when Breibart News is criticizing the president more than the Washington Post. That, to me, isn't a good sign. Has Trump been globalized? I don't know. Tell me what you think. My other problem is with Ivanka Trump. Now, let me just say, in my, in my comment on Facebook, I said something about, will the real Ivanka stand up? Don't get me wrong. I've had people that said, oh, you're jealous. Are you a green-eyed monster? Could not be further from the truth. I actually met Ivanka when I first moved to Palm Beach County in 2007. I was walking in the restaurant with my mother, and it was kind of funny. It was actually the day of Ivanka Trump's mother's wedding. And she was standing at the door, and I went to walk in, and she said, I do, please. And I, I laughed. And I seriously, and she laughed. And I said, your mom got married today to a much younger man. <laughs> Good for her. And she said, yeah, she did. Yep, she did. I mean, she was normal. She had a normal voice. My mother complimented her on her earrings. And her mother had bought her the earrings for, for the wedding. And, you know, and she said, thank you. She was really sweet. She was real. I don't like what I'm seeing on TV when, when she looks like a robot with absolutely no emotion, no feeling, and that voice. My mother went to boarding school. My mother went to boarding school from seventh grade until graduation. My mother does not speak like that. Everyone who goes to boarding school does not have a voice like that. Come on. Next, I don't think Ivanka Trump should be in the White House. I thought she was going to be there because I thought she was going to work on women's issues. And yet, you know, I have to say, a friend of mine said to me, what does Ivanka Trump know about the working woman, the average working woman in America? You know what? My friend had a point. Because not every woman in America has two nannies. Apparently, she calls one the blonde one, she calls the other one the brunette one. So isn't it nice that Ivanka can be at work listening to Affairs of State, which again, I don't think she should be listening to Affairs of State. I don't think she should be, list, should be with, with different heads of state and on these important issues. I just don't think her place is there. This is not Archie Bunker, let's have a family affair at the White House. This is our country, this is our government. I think she's brilliant. I think she's beautiful. She has a beautiful family, but again, what has she done for women's issues? What does she know about the working mother that works nine to five that has to pick up her kid herself without a nanny at daycare? What does she know about the single mom that has to pick up her kid at daycare, go home and make dinner? What does she know about that? She knows nothing, okay? That's my issue. My issue is I don't think President Trump should have Jared Kushner, his son-in-law, Mr. Prepster, and his daughter in the White House. Hey, don't get me wrong. I like Ivanka. I think she's beautiful. I think Melania is beautiful. I think Tiffany is beautiful. I couldn't wait to have them in the White House because I couldn't wait to see what they wore. Even the newscasters are trying to buy different outfits that Melania has worn and, and Ivanka. But I don't think their place is in the White House. Next. Am I upset about the way things are going? Yes, I am upset. I'm upset because I see two churches in Egypt being bombed and I know nothing has been done on our travel ban. Did a video on that last night. But even more disturbing is 22 Muslim training camps are right here in the United States. What are you gonna do about that, Mr. President. What are you doing about the Muslim training camps that are already here in the United States? What are you doing about the, uh, about the fact that we have mosques, we have Islamic centers, 
where all of the people that have carried out jihad, jihadi attacks have come from. What are you doing to investigate them? I voted for you, Mr. President, because I thought you were going to keep me safe. You're not keeping me safe if you're not going full force with this travel ban. I'm concerned. I have every right to be concerned. Many people are concerned. Next, when it comes to Obamacare, I voted for you because you were going to repeal and replace it. Do I blame the re do I blame President Trump? No, I don't. I blame the Republicans. They knew President Trump was going to be our president, and they should have gotten a plan together, a plan that would pass, but they did not. However, President Trump should have been on them, and he should have known better. He should never have let that bill even hit the floor. He should have known better. And now his attitude is, let it fail. Let it implode. It's going to implode. It's going to implode. Thousands of people, if not more, are going to lose their health insurance. And then the Republicans and President Trump are going to say, well, it didn't work. <laughs> and now we can deal. Let's make a deal now. What about the people that lost their health insurance due to Obamacare imploding? What are you going to tell them when they need medication? What are you going to tell them if they need emergency surgery? What are you going to do about that? Instead, we've put a halt on Obamacare, repealing and replacing it. We've put a halt on this immigration ban. Um, you know, I will say, I asked somebody on, on Facebook, I said, well, tell me, what has President Trump done? Now, I did know that he had created jobs. Judge Neil Gorsuch, thank God, he is now in on the Supreme Court. Okay, yes, congratulations, President Trump, job well done. Um, also, this is what I've heard it, uh, today on Sean Hannity, uh, he's bringing back jobs, he's got it, uh, era regulations, that's not a good thing, okay? Yes, I know President Trump isn't for the environment, but something that's very, very close to my heart is saving wildlife. And I know several things have been done by this administration to not save wildlife. We have baby bears that are now, it's okay to be hunted and killed. Baby wolves, it's not okay, okay? As much as I disliked and did not support President Obama, President Obama did have bans on certain wildlife restrictions, on certain hunting, hunting bans. He was for the saving of elephants. They're all God's creatures. I don't agree. Do not agree. We need to save our four-legged friends as much as we need to save our two-legged friends. Um, President Trump has ended the war on coal. He's reduced illegal immigration. However, we still have Muslims coming in on a daily basis from countries that harbor terrorists. We still have 22 Muslim training camps, if not more. I'm just saying, I've got concerns. I have real concerns. Another concern I have is President Trump has been coming to Palm Beach County. He has made six trips to the Winter White House in 12 weeks since his inauguration. Now at first, as you all know, I did it. I think I did a video, I did a blog on it because Palm Beach has been dying a slow death. How, and I thought, well, this is good. You know, he's gonna bring back, you know, people are actually coming to Palm Beach because they wanna be where the president is. But now it's starting to backfire. It's backfired on me personally. This past weekend, I should have been working all day Saturday. I should have been working all day Actually, I should have been working all day, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I was not. And Sunday, actually. Why? Because people are not coming to Palm Beach. I went to a restaurant on Thursday. The restaurant was half full. The woman that owns the jewelry store who I know said, Trump has been bad for business. Not going to lie. This restaurant is usually full on a Thursday or Friday, whatever it was. She said, usually people are shopping all day long. People aren't coming. They're not taking their private planes to Palm Beach because they don't want the headache. That's another thing. Lantana Airport, 
Uh, not only is West Palm Beach Airport a headache when the president's in town, but Lantana Airport is a headache. There's a woman who owns a flight, flight school. She's lost $100,000 due to closures of that airport. There's a banner towing company that's lost $50,000, $40,000 in contracts due to Trump being in town. A lot of other people are losing money. It's starting to affect average, everyday Americans. Now, don't get me wrong. I totally support the president and I am merely voicing my concerns, which I think we all should have these concerns. I voted for President Trump because I wanted my country safe. Doesn't matter if he creates jobs, if we go to church and our church is blown up. Doesn't matter if he creates jobs, if we no longer go to malls. I don't know about you, but I know less and less people are going to malls. They're shopping online. Why? For fear of ISIS attacking a mall. I know a lot of people that aren't going to restaurants anymore. People are changing their lives. This is having an effect. And if President Trump does what he says he did, says he was going to do in banning Muslims until they are completely properly vetted, then I will be happy. But it hasn't been done yet. He's on the fence on too many things right now. And hey, I know he's got an issue right now, a serious issue in Syria, and let us pray for the people there. But let it be known that these people, the ones of good intent, do not wish to come to the United States. They merely want their country back. They don't want to be here. The ones who want to be here are the ones that want to kill us. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching again. I'm not jumping off the Trump train. I'm merely saying I didn't vote for a globalist. I didn't vote for someone who believes in outsourcing jobs. I didn't vote for, for a quitter. I didn't vote for someone that says, oh, let's uh, let Obamacare fail. And then we'll get back to it. Oh, and one other thing. This is what got me today. Tax reform. Apparently tax reform isn't going to take place until next year. Supposedly, that was going to be one of the first things on his list as to save the middle class. With a declining middle class, tax reform should have been at the top of the list. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. And this is Sean Bianca, GOP Girl with Clean TV Live. And have a great night, everyone. Night.